What's poppin', everybody? Hello. Welcome to a Thursday live lesson. We're going to let some people get in here, and then we're going to get to it. As you're coming in, hit that like button, please. Uh, you know what the fuck it is. You know how this goes. Hello, as you're coming in, hit the like button, get yourself in the chat, ask any questions, tone, soloing, ideas. I'm here to help. Pick my brain. Give you what you want. Hello, everybody. Say hello in the chat. Leave some questions. We're going to do the damn thing. What's going on, Jelly Funk? We ready to workshop some shit, guys? Yeah, you beat Dabber. I mean, he's probably working right now. So it's it's understandable, right? Grab your guitars. Ask some questions, any question. Where the lesson at? This is the lesson today. Every first Thursday of the month is a live solo workshop and Q&A. That's every, every first Thursday. It's been that way for a while now. Most of the year. No excuses. That's right. No excuses. No surrender. All that good stuff that Tim Allen said. when you canoe on the first hit, right? All right, guys, any any burning questions? Ask and you shall receive. Otherwise, I'm going to start talking about fucking chord inversions and shit. My favorite Dead Live album? I mean, it's got to be Cornell, right? Like Cornell's probably like it's got the most like consistent hits on it. What about yours? Where am I based out of? Toby and I are based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. We've lived all around the country, but we're from here and we came back here probably around eight years ago, somewhere, something like that. Yes, uh, y'all. Okay, you try to let other people ask the questions for our one on ones. I feel you. Um, let's see. Aaron says, I know you're not a bassist, but I'd love to get some tips on getting fill tone if I have them. Okay, so Phil's tone is usually it's got it's got some more high end, right? It's more midi. There's more mids and high end, right? There's still a lot of bass. You're still getting a lot of like fatness, but there's still like that come through. And that also comes with him. He played with a pick. He plays with a pick. So he's picking all of his notes. That's also how you get those kind of like piercing toppy notes. So I would say 
pepper in some more highs and mids to your bass tone and then play with a pick because that's how you're going to get it and also do those uh do those fill bombs the like those those kind of things or where you're like adding on pretty important birdie what's happening that's my guitar's name guys please hit the like button as you're coming in and drop your questions in the chat they can be about anything they can be about uh, guitar or uh settings or techniques or life in general life love pursuit of happiness whatever you want to know bitch I do when I play Dead Tunes. I also know he generally had an onboard preamp. Oh yeah, so all like yeah, so you can get one of those too, like the the buffers. It's basically an onboard preamp, and you can get one of those thrown in. Like you can order those from the Jerry Tone store, um, and we're gonna we're about to be. We're, I mean, we're already kind of affiliated with them because uh, Waldo from Waldo Tronics, who makes all the buffers, like he built the buffer that's in Birdie. I've got one of his seventy two ones. I'm about to start putting in birdie like uh, quick disconnects for the preamp so I can try out different ones because that's going to be a Jerry rig video that's coming soon is uh, all the like the different sounds of the Jerry preamps. Mm. Oh, Matthew. Yes, dude. I'm sorry. Like I saw I saw your email and I actually looked through your Instagram. I just haven't gotten back to you yet. I want to do that, yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna, uh, I might, I'm probably gonna go, go over to Toby's tonight to film some Patreon stuff. So I will show him your page, and we will, we'll decide on what we want, and we'll definitely hit you up, man. And uh, I'll wear it and shout you out on one of the play deads. And Toby will wear his and shout you out in one of his videos too. Uh, guys, once again, hit that like button. Don't be a baby. And then uh, any questions you got, uh, hit me, you know, drop them. Drop them questions. Uh, you have one in your old options. Yeah, I would say just go ahead and order one. Go, go ahead and order a different kind of uh, buffer. Because, I mean, you're already going to go. And I would say hit them up. I would say hit up Jerry Tone Store or Waldo Tronics and ask them what they would put in a bass. Ask them which one. Because they've got four, I think. they got a 72, a Spud, a Spud 2, and the Waldo buffer, which is like it has an attenuator so you can change it. Um, what's going on, TD? All right, guys, so nobody's really asking any questions yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about, uh, does everybody know the kind of the idea behind chord inversions? So what is an F space pickup? F, F stands for fender, right? So you've got um, the fender necks are a little bit, just a touch wider. So the poles have to be slightly different. So mine are F spaced. Uh, so yeah, F just means fender because it's not a standard because the way the strings end up coming down off the neck, they're just a touch wider, just like the tiniest amount. It's like a super tiny amount wider. <laughs> How would you recommend to start learning to noodle like Jerry? Um, let's see. Mike, way to, way to come in with the, the fill knowledge. Okay, so Colin says, how do you recommend to start learning how to noodle like Jerry? But it's not necessarily, so you need to get noodle out of your head. Noodle, noodling implies that, you, that it's listless, that like you have no point and you're not going anywhere. And that's rarely what anybody's doing. I think that noodling is just a way to like, fucking downplay somebody being expressive and maybe a little weird, but, um, how do you know if you should get those? Well, you need to just figure out what, what kind of guitar do you have? Jelly funk. Um, so, so the noodling, the, the idea comes from basically, uh, so you've got, you've got these things called chord inversions 
And what that means is you've got different versions of the same chord up and down the neck. So you've got an E major here, E major here, E major here, E major here, E major here. And the way that I approach soloing is just basically, because soloing is just tracing chord shapes. It's the easiest way I've been able to think about it. And so I also use something called the whole, whole half method, which means I'm counting, I'm counting my spaces, whole step, whole step, half step, right? I'm counting my steps that way when I'm leaving a chord shape. So that's, that's also how I get there. And it's all about like, you know, uh, talking. You have, to, you have to learn how to, to speak through it because this is your voice effectively. The guitar is your voice. So you have to make it talk. So I'm going between, that's an E major right there. That's the A shaped E major. And that's your E shaped E major. Because it's the same as down here. It's just everything's, you know, you bar after the, because 12 is just the nut again, right? So you've got this E here and I'm just literally. That's literally just going between different shapes of the same chord, and I'm just tracing the notes that are within that chord and leading up to the next one via the whole step, whole step, half step. Um, Three-year-old daughter loves the song, Row Jimmy. <laughs> um, um, Dennis, this is more of a lesson than uh, a jam sesh is more of a workshop on uh, like ideas on soloing and, and things like that. So um, Colin, but tomorrow night, tomorrow night I do, I do a live jam. Um, the Olympic, no, no, no. Don't get the Olympic preamp. Go hit up, hit up Waldo. <laughs> You're not going to be, you won't pay that much. Um, 15 inch speakers. That helps a lot too. Mouth cam. Ah, bah, 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 bah. That's right. Uh, so, so when you're talking about noodling, it's more just about like picking those notes. Cause I do a lot of chromatic stuff. So if I've got a whole step from this E major here, if I'm on the D string, I've got a whole step, a whole step and a half step to get to that next one. Right. And then I've got, I've got those little in between notes too, those chromatic runs. And that's a huge part of my playing. It's one of the things that I get from Jerry, like, cause Jerry used a lot of chromatic stuff too. That was chromatic. I'm using. I'm doing all that. And then I'm just like. Um, that's all just going back and forth between those two. So that's why it's super. Um, it's super important to know all of your chord inversions. That's like the that's when, when you when you take a private lesson with me, that's the first thing we go over because that's like. It is the, is the base. It is like the, it's everything you need. So it's like, if you learn those chord inversions, it's going to make you a better rhythm player. And it's also going to make you a better lead player because you know where you're at. That's the biggest problem that I have with, with students that come to me. They're like, Hey, I, I don't know where to go. And it's like, you would, if you knew where all your chord shapes were, because you wouldn't be lost. You'd always know where you're at because if we're doing Say we're doing like a uh, say we're doing like a little Reuben jam where we're doing. Oh, what happened there? Hold on, my tuner. Oh, what the fuck? All right, so. So we got that little Reuben jam going. So what that's doing? That's a that's a B, F sharp, and then an E, right? That's what we're doing. So if I wanted to play that somewhere else, I would start with the B, because you've got your C-shaped B right here. So what I'm doing is I'm starting in this C-shaped B, but what's happening is these are relative chords, right? So B, uh, B, F sharp, and E, they're relative to each other. So that means when you're like, when I'm playing in this B major, since that's the first chord I'm hitting, 
I'm going to kind of stick to that. But also what I'm doing is I'm also hitting the notes because you've got a, a C-shaped B right here, right? And then you've got your E-shaped E right here. And then your F sharp is a whole step up from that. So, and also you've got your next B major right here. So you've got a B here and a B here. And then when you're working your way, when you work your way there using the whole, whole half method, you're also hitting the E and the F sharp while you're soloing. Now, when, when they say uh, solo with the changes, that's also like you're hitting the accent note, right? You're hitting those accent notes on the way on the way through those chords. Now, for some chord progressions, you will have to actually like hit the chord, right? You'll actually have to like change. So like D major to A major is different from D major to C major, right? There's a difference between a half step and a whole step. And it's it, it just changes up what you're doing and how it feels, right? Um, but when you're doing something like this, you'll notice that like, I'll, so I'll, I'll show you. So I'm doing a So you'll also notice here, if I've got this A-shaped E major right here, if I go a full step up, that's my, it's my F sharp, right? And then you add on, oh, watch it. So you add that on and that makes it the C-shaped B, right? So you've got, I'm sorry, I'm watching myself. I shouldn't be doing that. So you've got those same chords right there. And that's just also like every chord is showing you the notes you can play. So like soloing isn't the hardest thing in the world. It's just at that point, it's it's choosing and refining your voice, right? It's just the choice. And sometimes people have a problem with free choice, right? People want to be told what to do. You got to fight that. You got to say, fuck that. Fuck being told what to do. You got to do you. So you got to figure out like what, what kind of like note patterns you like. And that just comes with listening to all different genres of music. Because I like to throw in like some little soul and R&B licks sometimes, you know? Uh, like, so if I was going to do this, I would be like, like that's that's like R and B as fuck. And like you can literally take off from any of those notes. There's like because most guitarists they'll have like a string that they like to start from. Um, uh, a lot of guitarists have like a, a certain chord that they like to start from, like a shape. Uh, I like the I like to start solos in the C shape or whatever, because that's what I mean. Jerry used the C shape a lot um, and it's just kind of easier to hit arpeggios. And to for me, it's easier to go off of these C shaped chords. For me, it's just an easier springboard, right? And then, like, if you were going to do it off of, like, uh, the E-shaped B, which is here, you would kind of, like... Like, you have all those notes. But I'm always just trying to work between the shapes. That's all... That's that's what I'm doing. And that's the easiest way for me to kind of like turn my brain off and just kind of feel what I'm doing. Um, what's my favorite dead tune to play? One of them. Oh man, that's, that's really hard. One of my favorite dead tunes to play. Like what's really fun here lately. Cause I always love playing Ruben and Sharice. I know that's not a dead tune, but it might as well be. And then uh, cats under the stars has been really fun recently because I'm just learning that one. Uh, but one of my favorite ones to play, like right now, I get excited. Uh, I know he just mentioned Row Jimmy, but I really love playing that song. I don't, I don't like that I had to like not play it right now, but it's just it's a lesson. But I really enjoy playing Row Jimmy. Um, and even though it's like super simple, uh, sing yelling a fire, uh, yelling a fire on the mountain at the top of your lungs is always a good time. Guys, as you're coming in, please hit the like button. Uh, and if at any point I say something you like and you want to throw a buck at me, you can do it that way. Uh, first of the month always hits hard. Woke up with like $18 in the account, you know. 
Uh, this way makes more sense than the way I've always thought about soloing. Thank oh, dude, no problem. Um, oh, dude, dude, fucking Cats Under the Stars, is so, it's a lot. So it's like you're starting on an F. It's I mean, it's not too bad, but you're starting on F, and then you go to E minor to D minor to A minor to C to G to F. It's not too bad. It's just if you have to work through it that way because it's just like right down the guitar. It's And like that's a great intro and you end up doing that throughout the songs you already have one you know one of the sections figured out right because that's the it's the stars and then you then you start working through it that way that song is pretty tricky but yes colin like uh, uh, soloing is just tracing chord shapes it's not as hard Ooh, lazy line and supplication you like to play that one I would I want to learn it. I mean, I love that song. I love Lazy Lightning and Supplication, but you love to play it. <laughs> that one like I'm, you know, a lot of these songs aren't as hard as we make them out to be cuz like really it's just hammering out sections, right? Because generally things repeat except if you're doing like Terrapin Sweet, right? None of that repeats. It's just all linear. It goes all the way through it. Well, of course, a tutorial's in the works for cats, but as people are getting mad at me. <laughs> Um, people are getting mad at me for doing Jerry band stuff and like, uh, the deep cuts, but you have to, you have to, you can't do all the bangers. I've done a lot of the bangers already. You can't do them all in quick succession. I'm trying to like have job security. You know what I'm saying? Besides Jerry, uh, some other guitarists that have inspired me. Okay. So my, my, my top guys, right? So Jerry is num number one. He's like, because he's the one I vibe with the most because we have a lot of the same influences because I grew up with like an old dad. My dad was pretty old when he had me. So like I grew up listening to music from like the 40s up to the 70s, right? I grew up listening to all that shit that Jerry probably would have listened to growing up, like a lot of gospel, Motown, R&B, soul, doo-wop, a lot of that shit. Um uh, but I also, uh, Paul Simon is a huge influence on me. Uh, David Byrne is a huge influence on me. Zappa, uh, Adrian Ballou, uh, Robert Fripp. Those are all huge influences on the way that I play guitar and perform and sing. Um, and I, uh, I did, well, the Jeff, they only played Ruben, I think three times and they were bad. <laughs> Um, oh, you, you dig it on bass. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I would say, I would say those are my, those are my biggest inspirations, uh, other than Jerry and also Trey. Cause that's definitely in my playing style. Um, it's, it's strange. I uh, I have like a good amount of Trey in my playing, but it's like, I, I feel like I took the worst parts of Jerry and Trey and made my style. <laughs> But what's weird is that like people will tell me that that's like uh, I'll do something and they're like that's a Trey move and I'm like well Trey learned it from Jerry because you do know that Fish started as a dead tribute right uh, a lot of people don't really quite understand that, that there's a lot of like linkage between Trey and Jerry because J Jerry is one of Trey's biggest influences um, so it all just kind of makes sense uh, the twang barking I mean he's fucking insane Adrian Ballou is one of the I think he's one of like not a ton of people know who the fuck he is. Like, if you heard a song that he played on, you would know. But, like, he played with the Talking Heads. He played with King Crimson. He played with Zappa. He played with Bowie. Like, what the fuck? He was like, everybody wanted that, that string bean motherfucker. And he fucking murdered everything he touched. It was insane. The dude's a psychopath. Well, well, Obi Kenobi, you should know not to do that in the presence of the Fripmeister. You're you're fucking up his view of his fairies that show him how to play. Oh, he yeah, because he coined the term stunt guitarist. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm gonna tell you. I'm going to tell you some songs 
um, that are that some dead tunes that will really help broaden your horizons with your playing. Um, let's see. Baloo was supposed to play a, a Remain in Light set with Turquoise. What? What? Yeah, they did break the fuck up, didn't they? Always got someone hotter. Than, well, you you can't be. Um, you can't be the best guy on stage. You never want to be the best guy. I'm not the best guy on stage in my band. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, shit. Uh, so some tunes that are really going to help your playing. Uh, the first one that I would suggest learning, if you haven't yet, is Ship of Fools. It was the first lesson we ever did on this channel. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think I made it private, so you can go back and watch that original Ship of Fools lesson. But it was the only lesson on Ship of Fools on YouTube for the longest time. And that's what, that's what you have to thank for Play Dead, is that people watch that. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, well, I didn't. I mean, I didn't know your kid was disabled. You should have yelled that at Fripp. Be like, motherfucker, my kid is disabled. You son of a bitch. You piece of shit. You could have you gone that route with it. Um. Oh, easy was he's gone. I'm not talking about easy. I'm talking about if you want to like step your game up, if you want to step that up. The first one I would tell you to learn is Ship of Fools because like, uh, It'll be one of the first songs you learn in a flatted key. It's in B flat, and it hits a bunch of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily understand. Holy shit, kicker. All right. Sorry about that. You're having difficulty with sliding the octave. Um... Yeah, one second. So uh, the Ship of Fools is super important to learn it because you've got it in these flatted keys. And you've also got your first step into like some, some open diminished stuff. And it moves around a lot. It kind of like it's going to help with your mental elasticity and help you really kind of dial in um, these chord sounds. Because again... Super important to know where all your chords are. You don't have to learn every note on the fretboard. Some people will say you need to and all that, blah, 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 blah. You're trying to play, right? You're not necessarily trying to fucking like, you, you don't always have to be a student of every part of your instrument. You can, um, but it's it's not necessary to, to pick up and play because you can always add more stuff, right? You can always learn more on top of a good, you know, foundation, and that's what I preach. I preach a, a solid foundation of knowing your chords. Because once you know the chords, you already know what notes to play. They're in the fucking chord, right? And if you commit to the whole, whole, whole half, again, these are just bases to go off of. Because from there, you can learn different modes to overlay, right? But it, uh, effectively, with the whole, whole half method, you're playing Mixolydian and Dorian. Like whether you're playing major, minor, right? Oh, trippy hippie. Are you the trippy hippie? Um, dude, we're, uh, uh, there is, I think there is an El Paso. Didn't I do an El Paso? Oh, it's fine though. You're the trippy hippie here. Um, the bots have arrived. Well, I, I kicked him. Um, Okay, so you were wondering the, oh, those octaves in the beginning of Scarlet. So. The, it's, not, it's not so bad. You're just going to have to work on like muting, right? Like learning how to like hold your pointer finger there to just mute that G string and not hold it down. Or you can pick them. So I'd be like, and that's hard. It's definitely more ergonomic to learn how to do it with a pick and just mute. And then for the Jerry part, that's easy. It's just.
It's it's not. It's super easy. You're just hitting those chords. Um, do we have a wharf rat tutorial? No, I don't. Okay, so hold on. Let me see. We should have. I I thought I did all the Bobby Cowboy songs. Let me let me see. I guess we don't. Guess I need to do El Paso. Where Bobby fell in love with a Mexican girl. It's fine. You could have just said girl though. Uh, Phil learn, leaned so much on pentatonic. I'm wondering what other ones I should look at. Okay, so an interesting thing. Um, if you really listen to Phil, he's soloing all of the time. He's rarely kind of sticking to one main thing. So it's it's really about um, it's really about just kind of like learning how to like flow in and out of that. Because most of the time, him and Jerry are like soloing constantly back and forth. Uh, and Phil is so bouncy. Um, and so what I would do is still focus on that. Cause like, dude, whole, whole half is so easy. It's not, uh, I don't think about things in terms of scales. I don't think about that to me. It's constricting. That's also an excuse to not have to learn it. Uh, I guess that's what I tell myself. I tell myself it's, I don't, I'm not trying to be constrained, bro. But then I inadvertently constrain myself by not learning anything new. Right? So it's a fucking double-edged sword. But you got to be honest with yourself, otherwise you're not you're not progressing, right? So if we were doing, uh, take uh, take this Reuben for instance, just with that jam. Now if I was to throw my octave on here, and we're doing B F sharp E, so you would do. Always never never be afraid to to do a or a. Boom. Always those, those little fill bombs, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so something you would do, something around there would probably be like a... There would be some kind of, there would be some kind of bomb in there on that E, probably. So if you think about it, go back and listen to more of his stuff because he's also kind of doing Jerry and Phil did a lot of the same stuff, right? You're just hearing it in a in like a in a lower register, kind of coming at a different time. Uh, the Cornell seventy seven Scarlet, um, yeah. So like those those slides are boom, and like he would, uh, yeah. So if we're doing, yeah, let's just go ahead and do a fire on the mountain. So. Also did a lot of um, yeah staccato notes, like staccato notes, and also the you know like octave bombs, and also like these full chord where you're kind of holding down 
where you're finishing out. So you would be basically be doing an A-shaped chord. So you're hitting your... So all four strings are covered, but you're also, instead of just doing it like that, you're adding that bar on it to hit that kind of thing. Right? I, I know that, but it's also a good idea to learn that shit because you learn that bounce with those octaves. Those octaves are important. So like my, I think the, the best idea that I can think of for you is to like, to like transpose because I'm sure you play along to him, right? You play along with him and stuff. So start working in some other stuff. Start working in like some mixolydian and shit because it's not just pentatonic that he's doing. You can't just do that. There's a lot of it, but also you like, if you, if you add that in, you start hitting those passing notes where you have to continue on. Yeah, it would sound good with the... Been working on Warfrat. Yeah, so the Warfrat one will be coming soon. That that might be next week's lesson. Let's see. What about Morning Dew? You just heard the original one? It's all sad. It's all real sad. Uh Okay, what's going on, Rainbow Loom Overflows Dad? Okay, so uh, go to strumming styles. Uh, so I like to do the chug. It's that kind of idea. Right, so it's, it's that kind of hand motion. Of you. So it's kind of like a mute. So, like, my hand is on the guitar when I'm coming back down. So I'm hitting that chuck. That chuck is muted. So I'm like coming back down. Right? Just thinking like a horse galloping. And so you kind of just like pick and choose where you want to kind of take your hand off and hit the thing. So if you were doing, um, ah, shit. Okay. So, uh, the heart of the cup. So you'd hit the, uh, will they tell me a pipe in the sky waiting for me when I die? And then it's your born to when you die. They never seem to hear. Oh, 
Jerry did that that galloping thing all the time. Oh, you back, you son of a bitch. Get out of here. So like with and and you would also use it on songs like um all like brown eyed women like gone are the days when the rocks fall down take up the oak and plow the fields around gone are the days when the lady said please So that's that that's that galloping thing that he would do in like the mid to late seventies a lot. When they were doing the disco stuff, it was a lot of that gallop. A ton of that. So like I add that in all the time. And then there's also just like the chord shapes that you choose. Also, especially if you've got this tone going on, you there there are ways to get like You know what I'm saying? There that sounds that sounds different than this F, right? You're always trying to think about what movable scale patterns can fit between chords. Uh, your strumming is lacking. Hmm. But yeah, you don't have you don't necessarily have to think about that because like you're it's always it's always the same shit. You just have to you know adjust adjust depending on the the song because if you're doing it in a you can always just well i mean like too like it, it all depends on what you're trying to you what you're trying to give and take from the style right because there's a lot of stuff like Jerry would even like rest his hand up on his neck for certain things. And I'll do that for certain songs. Like if I'm, if I'm playing rhythm on something and like trying to ch like be quiet, trying to get more of like a, a warmer tone off of it, you go farther away from the pickups, right? And so when you're doing those kind of like, when you're even doing those like trill uh, picking ones, It's almost easier to do up here than down here. And for that, you're just, you're just moving. You're not moving your wrist. You're locked. And I've kind of got my hand propped up to go against. And so that's how you do those. Okay, so Dominic brings up a great point. So a lot of people have a lot of people have the same issue. Okay, so Dominic says, I know the chord inversions pretty well as well as scale shapes, but I have difficulties thinking of musical motifs or ideas within them. So that we, we talked about that a little bit earlier, but to be more in depth about it, it's like the so this thing that you have in your hands, like no matter what you're trying, the sound you're no matter the sound that's coming out of the amp, what whatever you've got going on, that doesn't matter. What matters is how you speak through it because this is an instrument like you fuck with the vibrations of reality with these things. You understand me? Do you understand the the fucking power that you hold in your hands when you have a guitar? That might be woo-woo, but like you literally manipulate vibrations. You you literally affect people's emotions when you play an instrument. That's what you do. You're responsible for something. You have to take that slightly seriously. So, so when you're doing that, just smoke some weed and brainstorm. It's not, it's not, it's not necessarily that, that way. It's just that like you, you do have, 
you have something here and this is your this is your voice this is how you talk because music is a language right it is the language it's the only real one right it's the only one that connects everybody and this is how you talk this is your voice box right but it's also your brain you have to think it, it, it's this strange this strange middle ground of like turning your brain off but still being active in a certain sense like because when I'm when I'm soloing I'm either like I'm playing out pictures and I'm talking like I'm having a conversation like every everything that I'm playing I'm also saying in my head so it's a matter of like transferring it from my head to my fingers right so like when I'm when I'm soloing it sounds melodic because I'm thinking melodically it's not just going to happen and it's not something that comes from like a choice it comes from you it actually feeling it comes from fucking passion you gotta actually fucking feel something you have feelings right do you remember feelings do you have feelings every single day of your life like it you gotta you can't what do you mean you can't because of your job oh you can't smoke weed because of your job no it's it's about like finding your center within this and being able to i mean again i don't want to sound fucking woo woo but i i it is a uh it is something to be taken seriously with the, the fact that, like, this is the way that you can express yourself. And a lot of it is pick attack, man. Like, you have to be, you have to change the intensity with which you're picking the strings. Because if you're just going through... That's boring as fuck, man. You gotta actually get in there with some... It's about dynamics, baby. Like, cause, cause like you can't, it's, it's on a spectrum. You have to think of this very wide spectrum when you're playing. Cause you've got, you've, it, it's like the infinite elevator, the Willy Wonka infinite elevator, but there, there are certain boundaries eventually. Right. So you've got, um, you've got the intensity with which you can pick each note on each string. Right. And that goes forwards and backwards, up, down, sideways, always. So there's, there's that, that amount of dynamics to your playing is invaluable to learn how to do that. And that comes with just like practicing, like going as quiet as you can. And being able to switch between those intensities is super important. You convey so much more emotion that way because it's that you have to that it makes you feel more it puts you more into your body and into your emotions like you have to be able to do that um it, well you are being you in in what it depends on depends on how far you want to go into it but i believe that like any musician is a conduit for like the universe or whatever because we're you're you're allowing yourself you're allowing like different vibrations and frequencies to flow through you right and that's that's a that's a, i think it's a real thing but who knows nothing is real right everything's real and nothing is real it's kind of it's a choose life is a choose your own adventure good luck um eat mushrooms and jam yeah dude psychedelics really they do help they help you see all the patterns and also allow you to like kind of like bridge that gap and kind of be able to to let your subconscious flow through a little bit more um cool still your map on the wall yeah Iculus, yeah dude uh love him love steal your maps look him up on instagram they're great um he's a really sweet man let's see when you use that tone control through an envelope or pedal it creates dude even you can fuck. <laughs> I love how it's just trying. It's just like everybody here's a loser. Even you can fuck. Oh yeah, the and the envelope filter. Oh well, yeah. So if you have one, that's a great way to practice. That's a great way to practice it too, because you all you you get to feel.
So that's a good way to work on your dynamics. <laughs> we can all fuck together. <laughs> yeah, you guys can all do that. Mm, they did say it was cheaper than Tinder. Guys, if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. And if I've said anything you really like and you want to throw something in the tip bucket, it only helps. It can't hurt. Oh. You got any questions? Anything. Anything at all. I am your... I mean, I'm not going to say I'm your guru. That's bullshit. Um, Jacob Leal, what's happening? Uh... <coughs> okay, so <coughs> it kicker. <coughs> what's your <coughs> what's your um <coughs> Thank you, Brants. Have a good one, buddy. Oh, you're in Murfreesboro? We're in Chattanooga. Hi. Hi, neighbor. You've been playing wrong? <laughs> yeah, dude, absolutely. Do I like stand up comments? Uh, yeah, I love stand up, stand, stand up convicts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Can I rec uh, recommend uh, what's your, what's your budget on envelope filters? I need to know your budget. Um, because if it's like around a hundred bucks that like you have some options, you've got, um, so there's the the Smoke and Amco micro micro V, and I did a uh, I did a, a review on that one. That one was sponsored to me, and I did a review on it. So you can watch a video of it and see if you eleven dollars. No, like one fifty tops. Okay, so the uh, the Smoke and Amco one, I have a I have a review of it on the channel here, and it's really good. It's a it's a clone of a Mutron Micro Five, which is it just had a range knob on it, but he added an, an attack and decay uh, to it and uh, the, the filter switch. And it's really good. You can really get a good sound out of it. There's also the uh, Nano Qtron. And that one, finally, they put a volume on it, which, like, fucking finally, that thing had an atrocious volume boost when you would click it on. But So now you can rein it in. They finally... Because everybody kept doing the mod. Um... And then, of course, you've got the uh, the Mutron Microtron Four. That's what I use, um, and it's fucking accurate because it it's the thing. But the thing is, though, is that these are, you know, they're, they're hard to dial in. Uh, I mean, I would say if you can just get the, so, so you can get the, um, the, they're all, they're all Mutron clones. So like at least the, the micro V by smoke and amp code, cause it's like a hundred bucks. It's like 110 maybe. Uh, it's great, and it's also like it's a clone. It's a clone of the original Micro Five. Then you've got the Qtron, which was literally made by the guy who made Mutron. So like you'll be able to get that sound out of it. I always think that they're a little, they're a little colder. They're a little colder than like the Mutrons. Um, and then you've got like the actual Mutron, which is like a full envelope filter. Fela Kuti? I have no idea. Sounds spicy.
okay, so you say when you put a when you put a capo on, when you put a capo on, you can't play it the same wait. Are you fucking with me? You change well what you're doing is you're changing you're changing you're changing it. Well, of course it's not going to be the same. So if you if you put this capo on and you play an A, it's not an A. It's not an A, that's a B. So now you've just you've changed the tuning. You're changing the key of everything. So that's why it's not the same. Right? I mean it's it's usually for like trying to find um I mean, if you're trying to find a, a way to like match your voice better, that's kind of what people do for it. And if people who, you know, it's easier to use a capo than it is to learn how to bar, right? How to bar those chords. So sometimes it would be easier to just do this and then do a C chord. Especially if you don't need to. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? David got some awesome gear and you know he ain't rich yet so don't need to break the bank okay so yeah well i mean like the um the mutron you can find them used so the the name brand you know you can get name brand you just gotta like sometimes you gotta be patient uh and you just gotta look right you gotta spend some time looking so i found mine for 180 which is really good i found it 180 used uh, on Guitar Center's website in the used section from a Guitar Center in like bumfuck Ohio, uh, and I got it for 180 bucks. That was dope, um, and that's cheap for what it is. And then you know I put the Milkman on a fucking payment plan. I built this guitar myself, and I it cost me 700 dollars to build my own boutique. Boutique. It means just means I built it. <laughs> um. So like I it's all my stuff is like sourced and like a bunch of my pedals are years and years old they've been hand-me-downs or trades um and payment plans dog it helps with your credit if you can get it um do i play dark star and e dorian or a mixolydian what's going on jesse Power on the Mountain was the first song you played live, and I know you write it back in 89. Damn, Jamie. What what else was on that set? Um, make it look so easy. It's not. It's not easy at all. It took a long time, and I was homeless for a long time. There was a lot of time to practice. <laughs> all that, but what counts is your heart. Oh, psh, that's so sweet. <laughs> So it's made of scary teak wood. Uh huh. Let's see what I would do. Dark star in. So dark star is.
So that's A. That's Dark Star and A. Now if we were gonna do B e Dorian. It's, I mean, it's around there somewhere, so it's... There it is. Again, you try to make stuff too hard on yourself, so it's just... I don't know. Well, no, it's, again, it's just shapes. Like, I'm literally not trying that hard. I'm not. It's, it, isn't, it isn't that hard. So, like, you said... Um, you said A, so it's it's A to G. That's the chord progression. It's literally just an A to a G. Right? And so from there, you can take the A shape, and you can start doing that. I'm just choosing the shapes of A and I'm working between them. That's all I'm doing. Right? And when you say E Dorian, to me that's E minor, right? I just I just choose E minor. Because that's G. That's the other chord, right? Because E minor is the relative minor to G major. So you're basically just going into G. You're just soloing with the chords. Right? So you'd go... So there I was just going back and forth between the shapes of A and G. So it's just, it's shapes. It's shapes. Nothing matters but shapes. <laughs> That's all it is. See, it's, it's as hard as you make it on yourself. It's patterns, baby. You know what patterns look like. What was your, what do you mean, dumb question? Hold on. Amexolydian works much better there, but E Dorian has the same notes. You just wouldn't want to emphasize E typically. Well, listen. Do you hear how, like, the open E gives it a little bit of uh, that, that kind of that weird, that, hmm. Because it, <laughs> The weird thing is what it's doing is when you're playing it, when it hits over that A, it, it, it goes from E major to E minor, right? Does that make sense? It's, 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 it's weird. I don't know if I fully understand it.
would kind of like, yeah, so you would lean more towards G than than E minor, right? It's uh, and that's like a note. <laughs> what what are you talking about? You talking about my favorite keyboard player in the dead? That's not a dumb question. Yeah, be good on yourself. Oh no, you can't like you, you can use it as accents. That's what I'm talking about. It's like you you would lean more towards the like playing it like it's G major. Um but yeah, you would you can also you can have that droning E where it kind of like shifts back and forth. It's just it's just pepper, baby. It's just spice. Get out of here. Even you can fuck. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. I don't know why they target us, y'all. Let's see. Uh, kiss. That's funny. Um, my favorite keyboard player in the dead. So like I, so I'm, I'm really into the mid seventies. So of course that's Keith. Uh, but I, I enjoy all of them, but I, I guess I would say like for the eras that I enjoy, I'm going to say Keith. Um, but there is so much love and respect for Pigpen, but even more so than being a keyboard player, you know, just for who he was as like the original front man. It was his blues band and it got hijacked by a bunch of hippies. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but there's a lot of respect there. And then also with Brent, I love like Brent just like rapping. I love Brent's whole vibe. You know what I'm saying? Love that whole thing. But he's not like his tones weren't like didn't always hit for me. You know, I didn't like that Fisher Price piano sound. Um All right, so when I'm soloing in the style of the dead, am I thinking in terms of scales, shapes, or something else? Uh, I Court, it's, oh my God, no whores, real cheap fuck dates. Jesus Christ. Thanks, Dabber. Keith pushed the band more than any other keyboardist until he got some, I mean, for real, because like if you're like, you listen to some some Jerry Band Love in the Afternoons before uh uh bef probably around like uh, I forget but it's before Blues for Allah comes out and like Keith is um Keith is playing the diminished runs from Slip Slipknot over Love in the Afternoon and that's like I was like oh he probably came up with that shit that's pretty dope Well, no, no, dude, Brent had to dumb himself down to play with the dead. I'll say that for sure. He had to definitely water himself down a little bit to play with the dead, but he did, he did help give it that last push. Right. Um, but yeah, well, I mean like, that's why Jerry got judged for the MIDI stuff so harshly. He was a fucking innovator, but that shit had just come out. So when I'm when I'm soloing, I'm thinking in terms of chord shapes. I'm thinking in terms of uh, chord inversions and whole whole half method. That's what I that's what I focus on exclusively, almost because it allows me to turn my brain off. Those are all your E's, and then you can work your way through it. I don't know how they keep getting through with this. That's too much. Yeah, arpeggios are, yeah, do them. Yeah, arpeggios are important. Yes, I would recommend arpeggios. They're all so easy. They're also just what? Traced chord shapes. Thank you. 
And like one of the better songs to learn, like to, to work on some arpeggios is unfortunately Slipknot, uh, especially that that uh, that second half of Slipknot. Right. That's just that's just some forward and backwards arpeggios just in that little line. It's a lot of fun. Um the best guitar solos have notes, scales, arpeggios, and chords all blended. Well, all of those are notes. Are you being facetious? Because <laughs> that's just literally, that's, okay, that's funny. Single notes, okay. <laughs> Well, yeah. So like, I mean, like I try to, I try to add all of those things in to, to a lot of my solos because like, that's how I, that's how I decide to talk about it. Cause like, if you're doing, if you're doing something in a, I mean, it's it, to think melodically, you kind of have to think in terms of where those chords are to be, because to be truly expressive in within a solo and stuff is adding those those extra moments of texture or color or what, however you want to think about it. To, to me, I see stuff in colors and waves, like a, a solo has to hit me, like I have to ride a wave, and if I don't catch it, it's not, it's not great. I can usually kind of pull it back, but if I'm not catching the wave, if I'm not like truly letting go and allowing myself to, to go with it, then I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw up. Um, and always, uh, always, 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 always serve the song. Serve the song. Don't be selfish. Serve the song. Uh, uh, Potato Raider, you're probably talking about um, to play like a harp. Oh, I love that. That's fucking adorable. <laughs> uh, let's see. I need to check out that book. I'm going to put that in my brain. Blair Jackson. Okay. Um, what are the spicy half notes? So are you talking about the, uh, the chromatic stuff? That's like one of the easiest things I do. Chromatics are important, and that's just all the notes. Don't even worry about it. Just play all of them. It's about where you stop and where you or where you start and where you stop, right? It's not really necessarily about what's in the middle. It's about how you say it, right? It's not necessarily about what you say all the time. It might be how you say it, right? Uh, one of those people right now, I'm stuck in a rut where I can only see solos as scales, and it's peeving you right off. Well, bro. Do you know all your chord inversions? 
are you looking at it as chord shapes? Are you like, what's, where are you at? Very common to feel that way. You can't come uninvited. Learn all the theory, then forget it and just play. Yeah, I mean, but that's hard. That's hard for some people to do. For some people, it's really hard to forget. Especially if you've gone to school for years and theory has been pounded into your head. Like that's why that's why I really respect musicians that can leave school and find their own voice, like their own voice. Right? Because my tone isn't exactly Jerry's tone. The way I play isn't exactly Jerry. And I don't want it to be, because I want it to be me. I want when you hear me solo, you know it's not Jerry, you know it's Davey. For better or worse. Hopefully you'll just think it's, it's okay, but you know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to do because I, I want to be the mix of my influences and still retain my own ability to, to communicate with my own voice, right? And it may sound like sometimes I might sound like Jerry. Sometimes I might sound like Trey. Sometimes I might sound like somebody else, but it's like the culmination of those things makes it me right? We're just regurgitating our influences, but if you can blend them well enough and not get too confined to one or the other, that's where you find yourself, right? And listening to yourself instead of regurgitating something that's on a piece of paper or on a website, like that's good to learn to begin with, but you really have to kind of take your safety net away at a certain point. So you actually find out where you stand and where your fucking metal is, you know? Um, you kind of have to like bear yourself naked in front of in in front of this aspect of it and like get rid of the cheat sheets and really allow yourself to improvise to like what do you think it needs right what does your ear tell you to play not what the paper tells you to play but what does your ear tell you to play Does that work anywhere? Literally anywhere. <laughs> it works literally everywhere. It is, uh, it is spackle. It is musical spackle. Is what helped you out? Yeah, always play with other people. Play with people better than you. But also playing well on LSD. Bam! Nailed it. It's really, it really helps, doesn't it? Uh, also, stick a little to the vocal melody here and there. It makes it more interesting. Well, also, I well, I I want everybody to be a melodic player. It's, you got to sing with your guitar, not necessarily like do the actual vocal singing. You know what I mean? But as long as you're thinking about it and playing it, so like, so if like if you've got, so the line to Rubens really so. So the, the, the vocal line to Ruben is like this, right? That's like, that's like what that part is. But if you right, I still did it. That's still like the same melody, but the, the notes aren't the same, right? So you can still be expressive in that way without actually doing it, right? So if you know what you're trying to do, just think about it. Like you gotta like, yeah, play like your mama just died. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think that's important is like really just like find spots of like emotional vulnerability and talk through it. Speak like your, your, your brain tells your hands what to do and your, your hands tell your guitar what to sound like. Right. So you got to open that thing up and you got to start talking. So listen to some of those voices in your head and do the notes that it tells you to do.
Let's see. Practice all the serious stuff you can, but when you get up to perform, forget it all and just wail. <laughs> if ever concerts that you can think of that really impacted you on a positive level. Well, the first live show I ever went and saw was Bowling for Soup. It's funny, isn't it? After starting on guitar probably five years prior, I started dead cover band. Was first in playing bass. Well, fuck yeah, that's kind of dope, right? Um, uh, da, 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 da. What strings do I use? I use uh, Diodario or Diodario, however you want to fucking say it. I don't care. Um, uh, NYXLs ten to fifty twos. I use skinny top, heavy bottoms. I am cotton mouth like a motherfucker. Let's see. You got to go. See you later, Wayward. We love you, bro. Uh, you can play any note, but if you constantly hit uh, non-diatonic notes, you'll lose the listener. Absolutely. You can't just go fucking full acid jazz constantly. You can't just be playing fucking like Tom Waits solos all the time. That's why those solos are short. You know what I'm saying? It can't rain all the time. No wound G. Are there chord shapes you prefer to play over versus some you don't? C and A shapes seem to be the easier ones for me. Yeah, so C shapes, really easy. A shapes, really easy. I mean, I can do all of them. Um, and I'm fine with all of them. I like to use them in different scenarios, right? It de depends on the song. It depends on where I'm trying to start. Um, D shape is a pain in the ass. Well, D shape is really C shape. Same thing. So is the, uh, so is the A shape and the G shape. Same thing. You know, I was a heavy bottom. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, 1985, bro. That's right. It's Charlie Parker. Cool. George Clinton quote. Yeah, yeah. He told him to play like his mama was dying. The guy who came out had a Jerry guitar. Fuck yeah. That's dope. See, it all, it all rolls into one, right? Boo, cliche. Uh, thank you, Richard. Richard sent out five bucks for the heady vibes. I appreciate that. If you guys want to throw anything in the tip bucket for the live lesson, Q&A, whatever, that's cool. Anything helps. Anything in the tip bucket helps. If not, dope. Ask questions. I got answers, bitch. It's harder to be a great Bobby guitarist than a Jerry. That, that I mean, that depends. It's it's just a bit. There's less. There there are less people devoting their time to it. There should be more people devoting their time to the Bobby playing, um, but the people that do really do it. And it's about playing your guitar like a piano. That's how he approached chords. He uses a lot of C shape and what I call the Bobby shape chords. So these Bobby shape chords look like this. Um, it's basically kind of like a G shape almost. So you've got your root set up like you would. A first position G, right? And then you throw, ah, oh, thank you, Potato Raider. And you're putting your pinky on the on the G string of wherever that, like the, the step up, the full step up. So that's an E. That's like what I call the Bobby E, right? I used to do these shapes a lot. And the C shapes. Bobby used the. And he'll like do these weird open chords and stuff. And these. the Man. The way he plays guitar is ridiculous. You knew that would be the first Bobby chord. Oh yeah. Absolutely. It's just. It's almost ubiquitous. Even though Jerry used them a lot. Like. So if you're thinking like Scarlet Begonia is the. That's just the Bobby shape B to the E. The K 
Cassidy opening? Or some such shit. Uh, it's also the E from the beginning of uh, da, 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 Jack Straw. Also, like it's important. I think you should implement because I implement things that Bobby did into my playing. Like sometimes I'll play rhythm a little bit like Bobby does. So I think it's important to be be the best of both worlds, right? Like try not don't just because you're you're doing you're giving yourself a crutch if you're not also working real hard on your rhythm because the rhythm is what leads you into being a good so like it leads you into being a good lead guitarist. You have to have that foundation. Okay, we're back. For some reason, some reason OBS just decided to drop real quick. Potato Raider, no problem. Uh, you guys, I also give uh, private one-on-one -on -one Zoom lessons. Uh, you can send an email to tobyanddavey at gmail.com if you are interested in personal one-on-one -on -one lessons. Welcome to do that. What else we got? Especially a lot of diatonic chords that Bobby does. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there is like a straight up Bobby dude. Yeah. Go hit up Bobby dude. Mickey. Okay. Right now is the sugar mag intro throwing the D into the A. Yeah, it's just It's super easy. That's uh I mean like Jerry did that shit all the time too. Or I mean, it's all it's all right there. So every time you got an A chord, you got a D chord, right? So you got an A chord, you got a D chord. You got an A chord, you got a D chord. They're all right there. You got a door, you got a gym, right? Door, gym. Slash chords like like gun like Guns and Roses slash like who? What do you mean slash chords like A slash G or whatever? Donald Price, thank you so much. Much appreciated, sir. Okay, 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 okay. That works for other keys, too? Absolutely. You got a G, you got a C, right? You got a G, you got a C. <laughs> you got a G, you got a C. You got a G, you got a C. You got an E, you got an A. 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 Let's see. Slash chord is when you change the bass note, right? Okay, so yeah. So if you were doing... Um, so one of the best examples of that is the uh, the chord in the opening of Feel Like a Stranger. So what what's happening in that opening is you're hitting a... It's like an A with a... It's a G with an A, right? So you're hitting a G. Or you would want to flip it around that way here. Let me do my close-up. Hello. So you've got this G with an A on it. And then you hit a D to an A. But so what I'm doing, hold on, let me. Uh, sorry. So that's a that's a G with an A over it, and then you're hitting a D to an A. So you would be changing the root. So if you wanted to do an A with a B, you do it like that, but you would No. No, hit the right notes. There it is. Um so it's not like, I don't know. And there are other ways to do it. I don't play them much, to be honest, unless it really calls for it. Mm 
Bass runs connecting chords. Like adding a G to an open C with your pinky. Absolutely. Probably help if I was in tune, right? Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do. If you're doing any kind of like cowboy songs or folk songs, you need that. You need to have that. Um, beefy C, that's right. <laughs> beefy cheese, you know what I'm saying? Got a D, got a G. <laughs> a D, got a G. And remember that the D shape is the C shape, right? Always remember that. Never fucking forget that I told you that. Because, like, even the cage system makes it too hard. Because <laughs> it's the, they're the same. You're just finishing out the chord, right? And then you've also got the A shape, right? Is also the G shape. You're just finishing it out. So, so if you were to mute these, that's a G. I don't know. It's just little things. Oh my, oh my God, fuck ad. <laughs> At least they're being straight up about it. That's funny. That's so funny. Why why should I try using what are you talking about? <laughs> try using some fuck ads. Probably not gonna do that, buddy. So uh, Eyes of the World is also a really good song to do the uh, the gallop on, especially when it gets into the... Uh, the da, 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 da. Uh, outside this lazy summer home. You got time to call your soul a pretty moan. Uh, but oh, when you get to the when you get to the chorus, especially again, like the, any of those disco tunes, man, you gotta throw that gallop in there. Yeah, dude, and uh, ah, dude, no problem. Like I no, it's not secrets. These aren't secrets. <laughs> I don't want people, there's no gatekeeping here. There ain't no secrets here. Nah, fuck that. I will tell you exactly how I do shit. It is not that hard. I mean, it's hard. Whatever. It takes practice. Of course it does, but it's all there. It's all like not the, it's, it's not a big mystery. There's no mystery. It's not a mystery. It's literally all just laid out. Like if you were to do, watch this. So if you've got, if you've got an E, A, and B, everybody should know how to do an E, an A major, and a B major, right? A fun thing to see is that you can literally work your way all the way fucking up the fretboard with it. 
So E, A, B. So that'd be like your first position, right? You're doing an E-shaped E major, an A-shaped A, and an A-shaped B, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a C-shaped E. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this finger up. You're going to bar here like you're doing an A-shaped B, right? And then you're going to add that C on. That's your C-shaped E, right? So you've gone... Right? And then now you've got your E-shaped A, your E-shaped B, right? So now, yeah? And then what you gotta do, you gotta flatten that, you've got your A-shaped E. Boom, we're doing another one. And then you add on C-shaped A, back up here, C-shaped B, right? Yeah? And then from there, E-shaped E, A, B. So like, I think that that's, that's super, it's, it's common guitar knowledge. Well, no, it's, for some people it's not. You know, like some for it's hard for some people to look at something simply, right? I understand that it's common guitar knowledge, but it's not common for everybody. It's like cage. Yeah, it is like a simplified cage. There's not there's not too much to think about with it. Let's see. Um, dude, no problem, Rico. That's what, that's what we do. That's what we do. How, how the 11 solo go? <laughs> that's fine, but I need to play licks within those, those shapes. Yeah. Um, a lot of my advice is really working on your phrasing, like, uh, really letting yourself speak through your through to your hands. So like say phrases in your head and then let them come out of your fingers. Um, so when you're no, we're gonna do that. Um, so if you were just doing So that's an E to a B to an A, right? And I've got this E here. I've got this E here, and then I will pass between an E, A, and a B to get to this E from this E, right? I can play all those notes. follow something that I call the whole whole half method so you're going from given from any string that you're on you're either moving a whole step a whole step or a half step or a combination to the next version of the chord so you've got this E here and you've got this E here all I have to do if I'm going from that D string I go whole step whole step half step I am in that next E right So I just went half step, whole, whole, back in this E. It's a really easy way to look at the fretboard and it puts you, uh, it puts you automatically into Mixolydian and Dorian if you're doing minor. So you're showing yourself the notes you can play. 
So when you want to play, other than Mixo, what are some scales Jerry liked to use? He liked Lydian, just like regular Lydian. He liked Mixolydian, uh, pentatonic stuff for like blues. Um, then there were the songs with diminished runs like uh, Help Slip. Uh, then you've got Dorian for minor. The opening chord for Shakedown Street is um, D minor. <laughs> I I hope I answered. I hope I gave you some kind of information, Josh. Because uh, playing licks is I don't know if that's is it D minor seven. I mean, you can. Well, Josh, so like it, the the licks aren't as important as you being able to express yourself through through the notes that are there. So if you know your chord inversions, if you know where they're all at, so you know that you 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 can do an E A B to E. You've got them all right there. Those are all the notes. fucked it up but it, but whatever if the, oh. it's all about choosing it's it's just choices do you get do you get caught up in all the choices you have the slipknot arpeggios are gross yeah oh you've been using the the palmasano course nice man Any beginner tips for singing? Uh, pick notes out and try to hit them. See if you can hold a note. Do that. Practice that. And then start doing like vocal lines. Right? Right? And like search for where they're at. Because like you usually don't have to move around a whole lot. Dabber, you're my boy. Thank you. You guess your problem is staying with the chord changes and playing triad based riff, but this helps. Thanks, man. Well, you don't have to, don't think about it that way. Keep it simple. Don't you don't have to think about it that way. Like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to play? That's more important to think about. You can like if there's a certain thing that you want to be able to play, learn it. Yeah, but you have to integrate it into your actual style. You know what I mean? It more choices, the music gets rounder. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, D minor. So you've got. Well, yeah, I mean, like that's the that's the that's the way to learn. Like, uh, if you. Cause I had to pick it up. Um, I had to pick up singing cause I was a terrible singer. I was a terrible singer when I was younger. I still don't think I'm that good, but like I was goddamn terrible. I had a friend who was a really good singer when I was in high school. He tried to teach me how to sing and he was like, I, th I think I can't, I don't think I can do this. Uh, and I understood why I was like, I, I don't, yeah, I was not, I did not sound great. So what I'm, what ended up having to do was what got me good was, you know, having to make money to feed myself. I was homeless. So it was either it was make it sexy or Papa doesn't eat. You know what I'm saying? You had to learn how to do it. So like I was literally like screaming at the top of my lungs, like on street corners in California and 
on the road and shit. Um, yeah. So that was, that was, that was kind of, I was kind of trial by fire for me. Um, but you'd still just kind of learn with just like picking out notes and seeing if you can hit them. Having access to reverb will also help you because you can hear where the notes need to go. Like you can hear them ringing out more and it also helps you with sustain, right? I know that that sounds goofy, but it's the best way to kind of train your voice, man. Because it, again, it's all work. You still have to put in the time and the hours, but the the way you can go about it isn't doesn't have to be the hardest thing in the world. No, definitely record yourself, especially if you want to watch your progress. Because you can't, if you practice, you can't not get better, right? If you have, if you're actually putting like intentional practice into things that are you know, making you better, not delusion, right? You have to know that you're not a great guitarist to learn, right? To like get better. You have to think you're not the best, right? Because when people think they're the best, they don't think that they have to learn anymore. It's the same thing like with people that have the delusions of like when they go on American Idol and they think they can sing, right? I'm one of those people. I went on American Idol and thought I could sing, but they didn't think so, which is fine. But I didn't have a delusion. I, I already didn't think I was the best singer, right? I didn't think I should have been there at all, right? So I think that uh, being honest with yourself about it, and yeah, you can record yourself and still be real with yourself about it because that's how you get better. You got to be honest with yourself about where you're at to, to progress. What's going on, Green Sound? Uh, what songs do you recommend to learn study if just starting to get into the dead? Uh, so it depends on, because I, I would tell you to go learn Ship of Fools because it's got some weird chord changes in it. It's got some weird chords to learn in it. Uh, and it's just going to make you a better guitarist. So start there. Uh, when you're ready, do the Terrapin series. Yeah, I was on American Idol. It wasn't very fun. It was like the worst. It was like the worst episode of the Twilight Zone ever. Terrible episode. You have crazy imposter syndrome. Hey, guess what? So does everybody. Literally everybody on the planet has imposter syndrome. Nobody's cool, man. Nobody's as cool as they seem. It's all it's bullshit. <laughs> if anybody says they're cool, they're lying because cool people don't say shit like that. Right? Remember that. Uh, did I make it on the, the telly or was I cut? I th I'm pretty sure they cut to me for like a split second. But they didn't want to use any of my stuff because when they dropped me, I just I just left because they weren't paying me. I was like, you know, you have to pay to go to all those auditions and shit. And you do like five auditions before you get in front of the famous people. Oh, well, I mean, Leroy, I have a I have a full lesson on it. You, I mean, you might have watched it, but like I have a full lesson on Shakedown on the channel here. What's going on, CW? Am I in any bands at the moment? Yeah, for sure. So my band, uh, I've got two right now, and they're mostly the same people, but I've got uh, St. Owsley is my Jerry Band tribute, and we also do some dead stuff. Depends on where we're at and what we're doing. Uh, and then I've got Chance in the Void, which is a dead tribute. It's just it's just the dead thing. So the difference is, is that in Chance in the Void, Carl Pemberton is our keyboardist, and Joel plays the other guitar like we switch off rhythm and lead 
And then I, uh, in the Jerry in St. Owsley, I'm the lead guitarist. Joel's on pedal steel. Uh, and Toby from the Toby and David channel. Toby, my Toby, is the, the keyboardist in that. And uh, we've got uh, Atlas on bass. And we have Taylor Wade on drums. And it's a lot of fun. And we, we like to do it. It's my favorite thing. And uh, we're working on touring. We're working on setting up tours right now so we can come see all you motherfuckers. What's my favorite MIDI sound? I love the saxophone that came on this GR22. It's it's awesome because it like has the breath in it. I don't have it on right now. I, it's still in my my gig bag. I don't set it up for these these lessons because not many people have asked to hear it while I'm doing this. Um, let's see. If you want to learn Grateful Dead, I think I think it's important to to, to learn the songs that are going to challenge you and get you playing different different styles, right? So like, start with just play play the Dead tunes because like, dude, learn Crazy Fingers. That song will fuck your brain up for a couple weeks. Go learn Crazy Fingers and then fuck with Terrapin. That song will also fuck you up for a while, but then you're gonna know it and you're gonna be able to add it into your repertoire and you'll be able to understand more music. You'll you, when, if you learn Ship of Fools. Crazy Fingers, Terrapin, no other song is going to give you trouble except maybe like Cats Under the Stars and uh, Help Slip and probably like Saint Solomon's Marbles and shit, you know, but you'll have, you'll have the, you'll, you'll more so have like the cognitive ability to like handle it and not be super overwhelmed by it. Hell yeah, A dubs. We would love to get up there. Coin op, my favorite dead era is probably like I'm gonna say 74 to 78. And then 80. 80 was hot fire. No, like uh you're not they they won't allow you to send links on in YouTube chat, my dude. Pittsburgh. We would definitely would love to come up to Pittsburgh. Having a hard time with bending and muting. Uh, so with your bends, I don't know exactly how you're doing them, but how I do it is like I'll always have like three fingers. I'll, I'll usually be bending. Because if you have those three fingers, so, you know, this is the note. This is the one you're bending up. And then if you need to... You're always using other fingers to help you with your bend. But leading, leading with the one you want bent all the way. And when you're bending these lower strings, bend them down. I've got pictures though. I've got pictures of the American Idol thing. I look like a doofus. There's one. There's proof. Here you go. Proof. <laughs> Katy Perry told me I look mad when I sang. She's like, why do you look so mad? It's like, bitch, because I'm mad. <laughs> Stopping at the top of the bend. Okay. What did I play? Um, I actually got I actually got as far as I did playing an original. Uh, the original is called the Get Right. Oof. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I got I got I got through all auditions on an original. And that felt good. Now I got to do it. 
it's just kind of like a it's kind of like a driving kind of talking heads ish style funk tune. What other music would I do? Well, I mean, like I've got originals, you know, like Toby and I have been writing music together for God, like almost 15 years now. So like I met Toby when I was 15. I'm about like Toby just turned 31. I just turned 30 in February. Um, so we've been writing music together for about 15 years. And so we've got a ton of shit, got a ton of originals. Yeah, dude, that shit was hard. It was weird. It was a weird thing to go and do, man. I, uh, cause like I also, uh, I did some acting back in the day. Like I would still love to do some acting, but since COVID and shit, shit's gotten real weird. Everybody's real gatekeepy. It's strange. YouTube's working right now. So, you know, eventually I'll probably try to do some more projects and stuff, but I was signed up with a talent agency to get me acting work. Uh, but they were like, we have a front of the line pass for American Idol. We know that you write and play music. Would you want to go do it? And I was like, I guess, I guess I'll try since I get to like not have to do the big thing around all the bullshit. Yeah, I'll go try. And I just kept passing the auditions. Right. And then I got, finally got to the Katy Perry bullshit one. And they like, it was weird, man. It was, it was weird. They had you going in and out all day with your guitar into the cold. So your, my guitar wouldn't stay in tune. And then they bring you into this, uh, this big concrete room, which I don't know if you know this or not, but a concrete room with no sound baffling is, uh, terrible for any kind of sound. It's terrible. Um, so not only is your guitar not going to stay in tune, but you're going to sound like dog shit while it's not in tune. And of course it's, it was a little nerve wracking. It was strange, man. It was a strange, uh, strange moment in life. Stopping at the top of the bench. Are you talking about like actually like bending all the way through to the note that you need? So that's about listening. It's about. Then you usually kind of come back. Let's see. Try to find you. And so as far as muting goes, like you're, you need to just like lay your, get comfortable with laying the meat, the meat of your palm, like towards your bridge or like, wherever feels comfortable for you to still to still kind of pick. Cause I mean, I built this guitar to like have like the perfect cut, like forearm cut for, m for me. Like, so this is the most comfortable I'll ever be playing a guitar. And then it Would bend an unplayed note. Okay, so you're talking about a pre-bend. Pre-bends are great. Pre-bends are awesome. That's when you bend up first and then... Yeah, it's so good. Um... Yeah, dude. Pre-bends are awesome. Do we have any? Do we have any last minute questions, guys? I'm about to hop off here. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit the like button. If uh, if I've helped you out at all and you want to you want to show some appreciation, you can throw something in the tip bucket. It always helps. Just pays rent and bills. You know what it do. Um, falling stars. Yeah, they do. Um, but yeah, if we got any last minute questions, I'm about to hop off here. We've been going for two hours. Yeah, I mean the the palm muting is like that's yeah that's got to be something that you you put some time into because like having that getting used to having that meat there is just like because you can always move your hand back or move your hand forward and be able to like prop it up right over the strings but like always be comfortable to like put that shit down. Do I schedule these? Okay, so these live lessons, these live solo workshops happen the first Thursday of every month. So this is the this is the play dead for this week is the live solo workshop question and answer kind of thing. So that that way 
you guys, I'll sit down for a couple hours or something like that. And you guys can like pick my brain about how we do stuff. So the first Thursday of every month, the first Thursday of every month, this takes the place of a lesson because this is a live lesson. Obi Kenobi, you demand. Thank you so much. That helps a lot. Um, Yeah, man, if you guys want to like if you if you can't like help monetarily, yeah, absolutely. Like share it around. That also helps. We're trying to grow as much as we can this year. We we passed 10,000 subscribers last year and we're almost at 13 now. We were hoping to be a little bit faster, but that's just like, you know, we got to we got to figure out where to throw it more and we're working on that. We're trying to to grow so we can grow this community with you guys cuz we we want to hang out with more fucking heady kids and hippies and shit. Y'all should come watch the podcast. So Tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a five-hour live jam. If you haven't seen it, come hang out. Uh, we, we play Dead and Jerry tunes or whatever somebody pays me to play or, you know, some fun stuff. And then also Saturdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we live stream our podcast. This Saturday, we're going to be on the No Simple Road stream as well. We're going to go hang out with those cats. Um, but, yeah, I love you guys. Y'all are the best. And, uh... So again, these happen first Thursday every month, noon. David Grab. It's I think it's well, my last name is Glab, but the Toby and Davy at gmail.com. And it should, I I believe it has the logo. Well, Timothy, if you Venmo it to me, I got it. Thank you. Did you, did you feel left out? Did you feel like I didn't thank you? Thank you. <laughs> I'll thank all of you. Ted, thank you. Pat, I'm sorry, but it's, this was a good one, though. It's, it's definitely worth going back. It's definitely worth going back and watching. There's some really cool stuff in this one. Yeah, thank you, Timothy. I'll thank you again, bro. Some people need more thanks than others, and I'm, you know, sure. Why not? So I love you guys, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night, and then I'll see you Saturday night. Um, I love you, Dabber. You're my man. You're 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 the man. Thank you, thank you for helping during this. That dude was a. I don't understand why they come after us like that. Coin op, thank you. Again, any any time. We we got this shit. We're gonna do this. I love you. Goodbye.